So as we get into The Killing Joke, I'm actually really excited to bring you guys this story. And the reason why is because The Killing Joke is considered, by all standards of measurement, the definitive Joker story. This is what many people look at and see as the one Joker story above all, which, and I, in my opinion, I think it's actually pretty accurate. Uh, the Killing Joke, I think, is a story that is timeless. People will look at the Joker comics in 50 years, and they'll look back at The Killing Joke and still say, this is one of the greatest stories ever told. And I think we can say that because this story was written in the 1980s, and the fact that it stands the test of time, I think, is a testament to how well this story was done by Alan Moore. But what we find as we begin this story is that we meet up with Batman and uh, as he's traveling to Arkham Asylum and Batman for whatever reason uh, seems to be meeting up or I guess at the very least uh, planning to meet with the Joker and as he gets into the building he of course meets up with Commissioner Gordon and uh, he passes the cells of a few people and ultimately walks into cell 801 which is uh, identified as name unknown which of course is correct because we don't really know the actual origin behind the Joker because uh, DC hasn't really given it to us they haven't really told us exactly what the origin is. But what happens as uh, Batman enters the uh, cell is he sees the Joker appears to be playing solitaire and uh, and sits down across from him. And what he says is that he simply just come to talk to the Joker. And this is one of the things that I thought was very interesting reading this story because it seemed very uncharacteristic of Batman to uh, let down his guard in a lot of ways and try to relate to the Joker on a personal level. And what he says is that he's been thinking about both the Joker and himself for quite some time. That if they keep traveling down this road in the end they're going to kill each other that one of them is going to have to die and so what he says is that he wants to make sure that he's basically made a genuine attempt here to try to reconcile with the joker to try to identify directly with the joker so that if that circumstance arrives where both the joker and batman kill each other that batman won't be able to say that he didn't do everything he could but he begins to get frustrated here and this is where i think the story gets really really interesting what happens is in his frustration he physically grabs the hand of the Joker. And when he does, he sees that some white, uh, white, I guess, makeup of some kind rubs off on his hands. And this immediately tells Batman that this is not the Joker. And so what happens is Batman seizes the individual and smears his hands across his face. And when he does, he realizes that this is somebody impersonating the Joker. And what's interesting here is that as far as I know, we don't know who this person is. And this person may very well not have known what he's done. And in fact, I don't even think we're really given any origin as to why this person had done what they did. But what he's done here is effectively freed the Joker from captivity. And in fact, Batman goes on to say this. Batman goes on to say that this person has no idea what they've done. They've released an insanity that just simply cannot be contained on the city of Gotham. Now, Batman's initial intention here, I think as far as we can tell, is that maybe he wants to pummel this person. But of course, Commissioner Gordon steps in and says that the laws that govern the treatment of patients keep Batman from doing this. And so, of course, Batman lets him go and throws his hair towards uh, towards Commissioner Gordon, which of course is a response to Commissioner Gordon's statement that if Batman harms a hair on his head, then it'll cause all kinds of problems for them. And so what we do is we transition to the actual Joker. And the real Joker is apparently investigating some kind of fairgrounds, looking through some sort of uh, maybe former amusement park that has since become uh, abandoned and derelict. And what he's doing is speaking with the owner of this, uh, of this amusement park. And it's kind of funny here because the owner is surprised that the Joker is even remotely interested in this, that there are all kinds of things here that could be uh, that could injure people. But of course, as we know, the Joker would love nothing more than to basically have an amusement park that's a giant death trap. And so the Joker says that he loves it, that he's crazy for this kind of a thing. And so as the Joker and uh, this individual are continuing to discuss, this person's talking about how uh, the Joker has the potential, or this person has the potential to revitalize everything. And what's funny here is this man does not seem to know that this is the Joker, or at the very least, maybe he doesn't know who the Joker is, or he thinks it's just some person dressed up as a clown. And of course, Joker being who he is, is, is feeding off of this and letting this man uh, continue this mindset. But what we do is we actually jump back to what seems to be the origin story of the Joker here. And what we're going to find with this origin story, and one of the things that, again, I think is really, really funny about this, is the Joker is going to both give us his origin story and then retcon it in the exact same, uh, at the exact same time. And what happens here is we meet up with some man who's uh, heading back home and, uh, and speaking with his wife 
life. And what he's saying is that uh, he apparently had auditioned for some kind of a uh, of a role as a comedian. And the problem here was that when the time came for him to deliver the punchline, that he choked. And so as a result, they simply said they'll just call him later on, which of course we know that to mean that they're probably not going to call him at all. And so in a state of feeling as though he's somehow inadequate here, he freaks out on his wife, Janine, when, um, when she simply says, oh, in response to his news. And again, this is him just displaying his inadequacy, displaying his guilt over the fact that he feels like he can't support his wife or their uh, their soon, I guess their uh, their child that, that'll be coming into the world relatively soon, the way he feels he should be able to. And so what happens is that as they begin to reconcile, that he says that he hates this life that he lives, that he feels like he's a loser here. The reason being because he can't provide for his family the way that he needs to. They're staying in the house of a woman named uh, Mrs. Burkus, and that what seems to be going on is that she doesn't really seem to like him. And indeed, again, he thinks that the way she looks at him is a reflection of how he views himself in the sense that he has his own self-loathing here. And so what he says is that all he wants here is enough money to be able to set them up, to be able to get them into a good neighborhood in a good part of town. And he says that women on the street can do uh, can earn that much money without really doing anything too in-depth. It's simply just what they do by uh, going about and engaging in illicit sexual activities, which of course draws a, uh, draws a laugh from his wife. And what his wife says is that she still loves him no matter what position their family is in, whether it is that they're poor, whether they're well off, or whether he has a job or not, that her affection for him remains the same. And so what we do is we pick back up with the Joker in the current timescape. And what's going on in this current uh, current moment is, of course, we see the owner of, uh, of this establishment, of this, I guess, theme park, uh, riding one of the uh, toy elephants, and they're joking around, and, and he's having a good time, and talking about how some of these things are still sturdy, and that while some of the things will need to be fixed up, not everything is a total loss here. And so what the Joker says is that this man's uh, silver tongue, as he refers to it, has basically sold the Joker on this place, and so he says they should shake hands. But what happens here, and this is actually something I expected to see when I had read this story, was that the Joker had some kind of a needle strapped to his hand. And so when um, when the Joker and this man shake hands, this man is uh, basically injected with the, uh, with the Joker's toxin, which of course is a, a hallmark part of the Joker's history. And we were, it's revealed to us here that uh, as the Joker begins to walk away, that this toxin has already taken effect in a very short amount of time, and this man is effectively dead with a uh, very, I guess, disgusting grin on his face. And so what we do is we jump back to Batman, and Batman is simply looking through, uh, looking through his cards or looking at the Joker card and so on. And so again, as he begins to go through these various files, what he says, is, or I guess what he realizes here is that he doesn't really know where to start, that all information regarding the Joker is really subject to whatever it is that he's gained over the years, but that no one knows anything about him. His intentions aren't known and no one really has any idea what it is that he may be doing or where it is that he's going to have to go. And this is a struggle for Batman. And the reason why is because of the Joker's insanity, again, no one knows what his intentions are. And so Bruce Wayne, Batman, is basically going to have to wait until the Joker makes his move before he uh, before he's actually able to engage in any kind of an action here. And so what we do is we jump to Commissioner Gordon and Barbara Gordon. And Commissioner Gordon is, of course, uh, making different cutouts and adding to his, uh, his existing collage of various uh, items belonging to Batman. And Barbara Gordon is commenting on this. Barbara Gordon is saying that it's, it's time that he begin to put these things away, that he takes some time away, that his job should be left at work, and that when he's at home, he should simply just enjoy being at peace and being away from the uh, the chaotic nature of what his job entails. And so what happens as they're, as they're talking is that there's a knock at the door, and uh, Barbara Gordon goes to answer it because she says that this is supposed to be Colleen, a friend of hers from across the street, and that the two of them are supposed to be going to a yoga class. And what happens when the door opens is that we see the Joker, who's actually wearing a fabulous outfit of a Hawaiian shirt and his uh, purple hat, and uh, pulls a gun and shoots Barbara Gordon. And this was huge because this was the Joker's first real strike at somebody close to Bruce Wayne. This was his first real strike at someone who really settled with Bruce Wayne, who was really a major part of the internal Batman family. And as we'll find out later on in this story, this uh, this bullet to Barbara Gordon will actually result in her paralysis. And so what happens here is that Commissioner Gordon, of course, reacts the exact way that you think he would. He begins to freak out. He begins to panic. And of course, he uh, tries to go after the Joker, but the Joker has a couple of his henchmen uh, begin to pummel Commissioner Gordon and then seize Commissioner Gordon. 
scene. And again, what we see is the Joker giving us some narrative here. He's basically, uh, I guess, relating Barbara Gordon to a book or to a to a library, saying that he doesn't really care much for this volume. And this may very well be the fact that Joker's referring, or I guess if you can cipher through it, referring to uh, this newest incarnation of maybe Batman's sidekick. Bat uh, the Joker had always seen himself, I guess, as a person, as far as we can tell, who appears to be under the guise of trying to make the Batman stronger by killing off people that mean a lot to him and basically going through this forge of fire that would strengthen him as an individual. But again, it's really difficult to cipher through the Joker's jargon, the Joker's nonsense, and get through his insanity to get to the heart of the matter in truth. Much like the Joker's history, what it is that he means whenever he says, uh, says something is really just up for scrutiny. It's really just up for uh, for debate here. And so again, we see him uh, poking fun at Barbara Gordon as, uh, as Jim Gordon is taken away unconscious, and it seems as though he begins undressing her, although we don't really know what his motive is at this point in time. And so what we do as we begin to wrap up this first half of the video is that we pick up with the Joker as he is uh, meeting with a couple individuals at a bar. And what's happening here is that these individuals, uh, I guess, are enlisting the aid of Joker. They're uh, enlisting the help of Joker. And the whole reason for this is because, as the Joker says, he, he, I guess he's really going to be involving himself in a crime of sorts. He's really going to be uh, participating in some sort of a violent act. And the reason being because what this will do is it will give him the money he needs in order to uh, in order to, to give both him and his wife, Janine, a better life, in order to give them a better role and give them the kind of life that he believes he should be able to provide as a man. And so what happens is that the criminals tell him that uh, he's going to be dressed in a disguise so that no one knows who he is, that what they're going to be doing is they're basically going to be giving him the uh, hood of the red hood. Now, this is a really, really interesting thing here because what this tells us is that the Joker may very well be being set up here. They might be duping him here and they might be tricking him here. But again, any of the uncertainty that the Joker has is assuaged by the promises these two men make of the uh, amount of money they're going to get, that the Joker is going to be put in a situation basically where no one's going to know who he is. He can look around by using some sort of two-way uh, two glasses built into the hood, but the Joker's identity is going to remain anonymous. And so the only reason he here is to basically give them a way to access the chemical plant he had previously worked at so they can carry out their plan. And so the Joker seems to see things on the up and up perhaps, maybe he sees things in a better way, but the idea here is that ultimately any misgivings he has about engaging in a life of crime are thrown away at the future he could possibly have with his wife. And so what happens as things begin to come to an end here is that, um, we ultimately see that the Joker begins to uh, to have some concerns here, begins to have some worries, but ultimately what he says is that after this, that nothing is ever going to be the same again. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. There you can keep up with all the updates from Comics Explained and talk to me directly.